Hey folks, I just thought I'd uh, give you a little first impressions review of the uh, Sigma 18 to 50 millimeter f 2.8 lens, uh, which I've uh, only uh, just 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 bought and uh, been having uh, a play around of it uh, over the last couple of days. Um, so we're going to talk about build quality first. So the lens is really light. I think it's around um, 300 grams. Now it's not made of um, metal like most Fuji lenses are. Um, however, it's made of a very high quality plastic. It's, if you've ever handled Canon lenses before, you'll know the kind of plastic I, I mean, which is like a, quite a cheap, rattly plastic. It's quite a solid plastic and um, the focus ring um, and the, uh, the zoom ring, which is funnily enough reversed, um, are actually quite like rubberized material, so very grippy. Um, and the lens feels really solidly um, put together. It does have a gasket on the um, the back of the lens. However, if you check the instructions that it comes with, I know a lot of people have said that the lens is uh, weatherproof. It's not listed in the instructions as weatherproof or weather sealed. Um, but the gasket will obviously help a little bit with protecting the, uh, the weather sealing on the camera. But the lens itself, if you read the instruction manual, is not weather sealed. Now I've been testing the autofocus, uh, mainly in video. Um, I can say in, in uh, photography and stills, the autofocus works um, really well, as I would expect. Um, equally up there with uh, the Fujifilm XF 18-55. Um, so very nice, snaps onto uh, the objects really well, depending on the autofocus mode that you um, set. Uh, so in video, as you can see from the uh, me running backwards and forwards, look, I can run now, um, to the uh, the camera, it's not too bad. It sometimes missed me a few times, but that's more the case of, um, I think even in the newer X-T5 that we're filming this on, Fuji doesn't always pick up the, uh, the face, um, but it seems to uh, pick me up quite well. Um, and again, I think it's up there with the XF 80-55, which it's, is its competitor, but it's significantly cheaper uh, than its competitor. Um, so all in all, uh, I'm especially in stills, uh, but pretty good in um, videography. And of course, this video um, that we're, re we're recording on the XT5, um, the review, uh, is actually being done on the 18-55. to uh, Sorry, 18-55. <laughs> it's being done on the 18-50 to Sigma. Uh, lens. Um, so virtually all the video, apart from a little bit of the B-roll, has been done um, on this lens and I've been quite pleased with the way the autofocus has uh, locked on um, and maintained um, focus on me. As I'm looking at the camera now, I've got my monitor on and I'm looking up at the monitor uh, and I can see that there's an eye box, it's swapping eyes as I'm covering my eyes and it's locked onto my, uh, my eye with the eye autofocus that's switched on at the minute. Um, so make your own mind up from the videos I've, I've shown you. I've also done some uh, close-up focus, and this is what we're gonna move on to, that the lens has almost macro capability. At 18 millimeters, it can get in extremely close to the subject, I mean, a few, a, an inch or so from what it's focusing on, and even at 50 millimeters, um, it can get within probably about 10 inches 10 to 15 inches of roughly of what you're focusing. It's, it's almost like having a macro lens and you, you can see from me moving my uh, golem up and down in front of the, uh, the camera that actually it's um, focusing quite well on it. Um, and it's even was picking up the, uh, the eye, even though it's because it's, it's, it's a hum, humanoid shape. Um, and it was locking onto that and I was literally popping it up um, with the focus set to 28 millimeters at the minute. Um, and it was probably no more than about four inches, four to eight inches from the camera as I moved it backwards and forwards, not far at all. So when you're getting this lens, you're getting a, a, not just a, you know, a competitor to the Fuji, but something that actually can work as kind of like a macro lens. And as you can see with some of the samples I've brought up already on this from the stills, um, you can get very uh, close. Next, I want to move on to um, the bokeh or the out of focus behind. So you can see behind me that we've got, we're at f2.8 um, and you can see behind me is nicely defocused out of focus. Um, and again, on the autofocus samples that you saw me doing, you'll see again, I've got some blue lights on there. 
um, and how they defocus and you get the bokeh balls. And I've got some sample shots that I took into this quite into quite strong harsh light because uh, obviously it's winter and uh, here in the UK. Um, so you know it's quite challenging conditions. Um, but even flaring isn't too bad uh, either at all. Um, at f5.6, the bokeh is a little bit square, square, like octagonal, hexagonal. You can see the aperture blades on it. Um, at f2.8, it's more or less round. Um, and it's quite pleasing. There's very slight onion skinning, but not anything dramatic. And the fall off is, uh, is really nice. So I'm going to bring up a few more um, sample photographs to uh, to talk about to see you show you some of obviously you've seen some of the uh, the bokeh and the shallow depth of field and the close focusing of the lens depending whether it's fully zoomed out fully zoomed in um, and as I say it produces very pleasing pictures at f5.6 it starts to sharpen up really well in the middle um, it's you know it's pretty sharp uh, I would certainly consider using this lens for portraits and even in f2.8 it's not too bad it's it's not terribly soft it's very slightly soft it's softer in the corners but for what you're using it for I think it's got a lovely character to the lens it does have um, a few um, problems uh, though and one of those is if you are at f2.8 and you Focusing on something with um, quite hard edges, uh, like this picture of I've taken a picture at the back of my car of the word Peugeot, and you can see that there's uh, if we zoom in a bit on that, there's a little bit of like fringing. Um, I haven't really tried to see if you can remove that, but it starts to disappear as you stop down, and if you stop down to f five point six, it's pretty much gone, but it only seems to appear on quite like harsh lines, um, and on the fall off into the uh, the, the bokeh. As, the, as it softens. And in real world, as you've seen some of the other samples I brought up, in real world samples, it doesn't seem to affect the overall quality of the image. And you'd have to be pixel peeping to really, really notice it. And I think when you look at um, the cost of the lens, you've got to factor that in. The only other real issue with the lens is it, does, it lacks an aperture ring. Um, but to be fair, if, you, if you're comparing it to its direct competitor, which is the Fujifilm XF 18-55 uh, f2.8 f4, it bests that with its, uh, its fixed, you know, its, its constant f2.8 aperture. Uh, but at the same time, um, you know, it's, it's much cheaper. And the aperturing on the Fuji lens is just a clickable dial. It's not a proper aperturing. It's not, you, so you can't really use it to see what you're doing. And the, the beauty of the Fuji cameras, of course, is on the lenses that have the f-stops marked, you can very quickly work out what f-stop you are. So it's not a great disadvantage, really, when you're comparing it to the lens you, you would be considering. So it's really to, to sum up, um, it's only £430, uh, which is an incredible price for what you're actually getting. It's well built, it has good image quality, it has macro capabilities, um, it comes with a little hood. Um, which works quite quite effectively. It's super light at around about, I think it's around 300 grams. Um, and it is probably going to get me to sell the XF 18 to 55 as well, I think. Um, it's that good. Um, there are certainly compromises. It doesn't have um, an aperture ring as such, but you can do the aperture on the dials. Um, it's not the same metal build quality. It's not weather sealed um, like some of the other Fuji lenses are, but there are always going to be compromises at this uh, price point. So all in all, I've been using this lens for the last sort of week since I've had it and thoroughly enjoyed it. It's super light. Um, it's something that you can easily squeeze into a, a small uh, camera bag um, and it would complement, you know, something like an 18135 or a 55-200 if you were going out with those two sort of uh, zoom lenses uh, for general purpose photography. But as I say, you could do so much more with this. I think you could do portraits with it. You can do general landscapes with it. Um, you can do macro work with it. It's not a full macro lens, but it's certainly capable. Um, it's a good videography lens. Um, it does have a little bit of focus breathing when you zoom. If you zoom very slowly, uh, it will kind of hold focus. 
it doesn't have that aperture filtering that the Fuji lenses have, but hey, who zooms uh, when they're making films? Uh, it's kind of a cardinal sin, I think. Uh, set your focal range up and then you're not really bothered about it. A lot of people will comment about lenses uh, sort of losing focus when you zoom in, but don't zoom. Stop your recording, recompose, and then do that. It's just... You watch a feature film, very rarely do you see them zoom. They'll cut to a different focal range. So that's, those problems are minor. Um, if you really want a focal ring, you've got to go up to the Fuji 16 to 55 f2.8, which is a much more expensive lens. It's much heavier, although it is um, weather sealed, but they're their similarities, you know, that in sharpness, this, this lens is up there. Uh, it's, despite its, its shortcomings, it's, I think, it's staggering value for money. And I've been very pleased with it. So I personally would recommend this lens. It's purely based on the fact that I've so enjoyed using it um, just in this last week. Um, thoroughly enjoyed. Anyway, folks. I hope you um, enjoyed the pictures and the little review on this. And uh, I've kept it a sort of a non-technical review because I tend to do reviews uh, from the heart, as it were, and just how I feel about something uh, with some pictures and real world examples um, to give you an idea of what it's like. If you have any questions about the lens or you want me to do something else to do with the lens in a future video, please uh, comment below. Uh, and do remember to like, subscribe and share the video because it helps that wonderful YouTube algorithm. Catch you all later, folks. Bye.